Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next speaker, Noriko Mizumoto. Hello, uh, my name is Noriko Mizumoto. Thank you for coming my talk. Uh, this is the very first time for me, so getting very, very nervous. Uh, if any questions, please feel free to throw straight away. Uh, let me introduce myself a bit. Um, I am Noriko Mizumoto, a uh, Red Hat employee, and my section is called the uh, Localization Service Team under the Globalization. Uh, today I'd like to introduce uh, what is the localization is. Uh, first, I'd like to talking about what is the localization. Visually, I'd like to introduce you and then show you how it looks like and then go through the uh, internationalization and then push to the Zanata platform. When you, uh, if you're the uh, developers or the programmers or maintainers, and then looking at to uh, localize your application, then you have to go through the work process. Uh, internationalization is kind of the preparation that the application to be localized so that this has to be done first. After the internationalization, then, well, the file itself, the translator can work, but it much more safe and better way to use the uh, translation platform is called Zanata that has been uh, briefly introduced by the Prabhi in the uh, previous talk. Uh, push to the Zanata platform means that push the file itself to the Zanata platform. And then it's ready to be localized by the translators. Localization won't happen in the automatically. It is on the machine translation. Every, uh, every language translator will work manually to translate every strings in the Zanata. And then once completed the files, uh, what happens is, again, the developer has to pull the files to repackage the application itself. And that is the, work, that is the workflow. And at the end, we'd like to talk a little bit the tips when you, when you are thinking about to localize your application itself. Uh, first, what is localization? This is a bad manager, hmm? bad manager program. Uh, everybody probably know that to create the battery machine. Uh, the left is English version, and then right is localized Japanese version. You can see the buttons say file or edit, view, help on the top has been localized. And also the status of the every battery machine is stopped, has also the localized. But in this state, probably many of the users these days do understand the file or edit such a small button. So what's the point to localize? Now, with the same programs, try to create the new battery machine, then widget comes up. Now, widget is a little bit longer to explain how to create uh, machines nicely. So, as you can see in English, still simple and clear instruction there, and then you can choose uh, which format you'd like to use to create your virtual machine. But uh, I think that many of you here in this rooms can speak the non-English languages as, as well, to me, I am the Japanese, and my mother tongue is a Japanese. So if I, if I can read those explanations in Japanese, just looks like a right-hand side, it's much more intuitive, uh, I would say. If see the English screen, I would say I need a two to three minutes for one screen, and this is a five steps. So that means two times five, so 10 minutes. I uh, need to 10 minutes to create the virtual uh, machine. But for the uh, localized version, it's so quick. Click, click, click. Probably I can make the virtual uh, machine in a minute. 
that's how the, the uh, localized versions makes user friendly. This is how it looks like a documentation. We do the local, lo localized documentation as well, like an installation guide. Such an operating system, or the bigger system, or complicated application or the program, maybe the developer would like to uh, document for the users how to use it or how to install or the reference guide. Those also can be localized. Uh, again, the left-hand side is English and right-hand side is Japanese. Exactly the same structure, but the older uh, ex explanation is in, in, is in Japanese here. Now, first step is internationalized. Internationalized, as I explained, is a preparation. One of uh, preparation, not necessarily to do the every time you want to, to localize. Once to internationalize, done, and that's it. And this is uh, not somebody do, but the developer self do the uh, internationalization process. I will show you a li little bit more. Um, if, the, if the developer developing on the Linux, highly likely using the get text, I think. And when this is, uh, sorry, right hand side is uh, how to use the get text, uh, simply um, it's kind of the introduction. And you can find fedoraproject.org wiki how to do internationalization through Git text. So I don't go through details about this because I am not going to talk about the internationalization today, but how it looks like. And then left hand side is a JAPO repository. Use the Git text, you will get the source file called POT pot file. And then underneath, there is a JAPO, FRPO, CSPO, or ZH-TW, which means uh, traditional Chinese PO. So the source file, and then, uh, and then the uh, language PO files follows in the one repository. The Another example is logging tooling. If a uh, developer is uh, developing an application in JBoss, then get takes no, no longer work. So usually they're going to use the logging tool. Again, that the right hand side is a briefly introduction about how to use the logging tool to internationalize. When JBoss application internationalized, then that the file going to be not the PO file, but the i18n underscore en dot property file. This is a source file. It's called a source file. It's English file. And then the uh, localizable, translatable file going to be the i18n underscore fr, again, dot property file. This is how it looks like. If internationalized, those uh, files will be ready in the one repository. So now ready to localize. So as explained, this time we're going to use the Zanata. Push to the Zanata. This has to be done by the developer. Uh, Zanata is not only one uh, platform we use. As it says, the GNOME localization team used the DAM Lite, where I am belonging to as well. And LibreOffice localization used the portal. And then Fedora localization team using the Zanata. In person, I think the Zanata is a very much translators friendly platform, comparing than the DAM Lite or the portal. But I don't talk much about the Pluto or the uh, Dam Light. But basically, the, all those uh, platform works are uh, almost the same. It's a uh, uh, bridging near developer and then translators. This is the PO file, how it looks like. Developers can actually pass this file to the specific translator, like a Japanese. Translators say one de developer would like to localize the application just to the uh, Japanese, and then he might pass this file to me. 
then I can go through this file using the VI or the EMAC or whatever the preferable editor is to uh, localize, say, MSG ID is, uh, no. MSG ID and MSG SDR between the uh, double quotation has to be uh, translated. However, when using the editors, it's it's so simple. It, it's so easy to insert the wrong characters between somewhere you don't have to, or delete something uh, accidentally. But I didn't say I didn't notice it, and then pass back to the developers, and developers repackage this file to uh, include the uh, localized version in the package, and then try to run, and then suddenly the package itself stopped working. Developers has no idea why it stopped working, and then thinking about, oh, this is a localization, and this is the typical way that the developers hate and dislike translators. They don't know anything at all about the localization, about the uh, tec technical thingies. So that's why that the uh, using the Zanata is the point. Be friend to the developers and the translators. This is how to create the project. Say, first, a uh, developer has to create the project. This is, again, the only one's time. Uh, it's so easy. Go to the project, create the new project, and then insert the necessary field, and that's it. Now, empty project being created. So there, the place that push the PO files or the property files or whatever. You can see in the new project, there is a file format. Uh, it get text is a PO files. PO directly, it is for the mainly the documentation. Documentation, uh, the base file is XML. And then they do have, uh, when they convert it to a PO file, then there is a multiple pot file. Software is only one pot file, but the documentation has a multiple pot file. So they have a direct, uh, directly or the hierarchy so that they have to choose the uh, directly PO directly. And then properties and other format. It's uh, pretty much many various of the formats are supported by Zanata. And right hand side is the Anaconda example, how it looks like. And then there is a branch for the rail, branch for the Fedora. So the translator size can be uh, can choose which branch they gonna work. Say the Fedora people. They like to use. Uh, they like to translate the Fedora 24, and then go to the 24 branch. For internal translator who uh, translate in the Rails 6 minor version or Rails 7 minor version, they might go the Rails 7 branch. Uh, here, the lo uh, because the localization is not auto automated. Localization is every translator's work, so I'd like to introduce a little bit about the localization team of the Fedora. Uh, we have, as Prabin already explained, we have 80, total 81 language teams uh, registered at the moment. We'll Talking about how many language teams are active, then it's up and down, so I can't give you the clear idea, but roughly about 40 plus language teams are active at the moment. Every language team might have only one translator to the big matured teams would be, I'd say, eight to 10 or more translators. For Japanese teams, active translator around the five to six translators, but the registered translators just, just registered inactive, including inactive, more than 100 translators are registered. 875 officially registered translators. That means uh, we do have uh, 
trans, uh, trans at list mailing list, which are shared mailing list, all the translator has to join this mailing list and then common language is English, so we can share the information and announcement or the discussion uh, across the language will be happen in this mailing list and then registered by the 875 people. That means we have 875 translators registered at the moment. This is all inclusively in active translators. So actually the active translator is less than, than this number. Uh, platform, Zanata has a couple of platforms and this is fedora.zanata.org is a Fedora specific instance. So into login, you have to use the FAS account. It's same thing applies to the developer who wanted to make a project. They have to have a FAS account. We have a wiki page, so anyone who like to know a little bit more about the localization, please go to the wiki page. We have a home page. At the moment, we are having a bi-weekly meeting. If you're interested, you can join us. But probably we might bi-weekly, monthly is still talking about, so the frequency may change. Now, this is how it looks like from the, for the translators. Left-hand side is uh, just after choosing the branch. Uh, there are the many languages available. If you are the, uh, which one did I choose it? Well, if I am the Japanese translator, then, then choose the Japanese language. If you're the French translator, choose the French language. And then there the, it says Anaconda, click that one. And then we'll show it called the editor screen. And then, Left is English string, and then right is a translatable field. It's already translated, but uh, usually it's empty, untranslated. Or if anything changed the, from the previous the English, English strings, then it will be fudgy marked there. Something, something changed, so that the translator do understand something changed. And once translation completed, it says 100%. So now the time to pull by developers. We notify to the developers we're done. Uh, this is how to page. So developer has to go through this page to learn how to pull the translation back. In short, Zanata dash CLI pull dash s s r c dash d trans. This is one command that you can pull. That's it. And then once you this one command will uh, pull all the translations. If you pull just, I don't think so, but if you want to choose, uh, pull just one language, there is a way to go. And also just one language, probably you can pull from the uh, user interface. But as a Zanata team said, uh, this is the, using the command line is the recommended way to pull the translation. And I think this is a comfortable way for the developers as well. Okay, last one, uh, tips for localization. Writing English, um, what the stupid thing I'm talking about, you might say, but uh, that means uh, some developers would like to develop the software in Spanish because their ma mother language is Spanish, I mean a user interface. But if uh, develop in uh, Spanish and then localize into Japanese, then developer has to find the uh, translator who are capable to translate from Spanish to Japanese. There is a way smaller number of translators who can translate from Spanish to Japanese, comparing the translator who can translate English to Japanese. So. 
I don't, I don't say that English is a higher priority, but uh, because the English is a common language, so it is uh, better to write the English for the user interface to be translated, so that the, uh, it would be uh, most easy to grab the uh, any kind of the any kind of the language translators. Uh, pay attention to the strings. Um, this is a headache, a common headache for the translators. Substitutions, it's just a substitution. Translator never know what's in there. Developers put the substitution as a user interface. They do understand what's in there, but we don't. And then, as, it, as I said, It comes looks like that. Uh, this is es.po, and right hand side, it's kind of a list of the strings. So we just imagine what's going to be in the substitution if there is only substitutions and there is no explanation. So when you use the substitutions, please pay attention if this can be understandable for the translator. And again, the multiple substitution. Uh, this is another problem, the grammatical problem. S uh, English is subject, verb, and objective. But for the Japanese or many other Indian languages will be translated, skip the subject, and then object and verb. So the substitution order will be, can be changed. But if translator sees same substitution one, two, three, translator knows we can't change this order, otherwise the translation will be messed up. And then took so many hours how to translate without changing the order. This, this is a challenge for the translator, so if you can avoid, please avoid use a multiple substitute. And the second one is development cycle. Uh, the previous talk talking about the string freeze, uh, the translator will be more active after string freeze because uh, before the string freeze, strings can be changed, of course. So if translate and then changed, it is kind of a uh, waste of the time. So most likely translate wait until the date of the string freeze and then be active to translate. And then we are looking at the translation deadline. And once the translation deadline passed, then we're gonna be the inactive. The problem is developers push the files regardless of the string freeze or regardless of the translation deadline. And then pull, of course nothing happens. And then at the end, the operating system partially unlocalized. So that the user said, oh, Fedora not partially not localized for my language. For the translator size, I translated 100% at the end of the deadline. How come this happens? This string is unlocalized. I haven't seen the strings during my translation period. And then that, that thing can demotivate the translators. So please, be, please pay attention about the development cycle. And we do understand that sometimes it has to be break. It, uh, string has to be changed out of this period. We do understand, so just let us know that string has to be changed. Then we will say, yes, we can accommodate. Then we will start it to work out of the period. But it called a silent break, nothing being informed, then nobody knows, so nothing happens, translation not happens. So if you need to change the strings out of the scope, then let us know. 
uh, provide test environment. Uh, this is not going to happen for the Fedora, but sometimes JBoss or the other project may happen. If, say, like OpenStack or OBAT is uh, mainly uh, online tools, online applications, that means uh, translators can't install the any uh, de uh, developing release or uh, sorry developing packages. So it is nice to prepare the uh, test environment to go through because as it says uh, we see just the strings and give a translation. Sometimes we just guess how the strings comes up in what situation. So say printing is is this in the way that printing or is just known of the printing is different, different translation. So if you give a test environment, we can go through how it, lo how it looks like and then we can change it correctly. So test environment is a very important part for the trans translator's team and it is very much useful. And the communicate with the localization team. We are... Uh, um, I think almost happy, smiling people. So don't be afraid to communicate to us, pin us. We are happy to answer any questions. And f uh, finally, I like you. If you can speak other than English, please join our localization team, Fedora localization team, so that you can understand how the localization works. Also, you yourself can join to localize your application as well and the others. Uh, how to join quickly goes through the Create a Fedora account system, subscribe the mailing list, introduce yourself, sign up to Zanata, start translating. That's all we need. So, so simple to join. Uh, this is uh, surrounding teams check team uh, coordinator is Adam. I'm not sure he is a Red Hat employee. Uh, Hungarian team coordinator is Dolzan Hopper. He is non-Red Hat people. He's a very kind and long contributing uh, coordinator. Slovak team coordinator is Marek. I think he's a Red Hat employee. Uh, German team is coordinator is Roman. And Polish team coordinator is again Piotr. He's also the uh, Fedora localization steering committee members with me. And also the ad administrator of the uh, Fedora Zanata, Fedora .zanata.org instance. So if you guys too shy to join straight away, probably these guys can give the better answer. Uh, finally, if you like to shoot a questions after these sessions, I'm always on the RRC Free Node, uh, Fedora G11N channels. My nickname is Noriko underscore, so, sorry, Noriko, all the uh, cap no capitals, N O R I K O, or you can send me an email, noriko at redhat.com. Uh, that's all my talk. Is any questions I can answer now, if I can? Yeah, yes. I have one. Um, I, I don't know how, how if you have some experience with that, but uh, how is your policy about uh, uh, about uh, mistakes in uh, translations? Because sometimes uh, they must happen. That's for sure. And uh, but uh, let's say that this mistake uh, is. Uh, Maybe not exactly uh, wrong word, but a word that is not uh, very precise. And it stays in software, uh, everyone understands it somehow, and, and uh, for it is there for a few generations of, yep. of, of this software. So how is your policy? Will you uh, at the end change this, or will you leave it because uh, your users are used to it, and uh, nowadays everyone knows uh, what, what this means? Even if you know that uh, maybe it's not the best yep. translation. Yeah. Uh, the question is, uh, what is any policy that can define this is a good translation or bad translation better be fixed? Is that right? Yeah. 
uh, uh, we do, it really depends on the team, but in this case, very, I think talking about the sensitive translations, it depending on the translator. And then this can happen not only in the Fedora, this happens in the GNOME or the other project. Usually what happens is uh, first communication, talking each other, the one translator and another translator who has the different opinion. And then it both can, can, cannot agree the others, then usually we ask the coordinator or the moderator, if there is a moderator in that team, and that moderator or the coordinator will give a decision finally. But it is the best way to talk that one person to the other person and have a, a best solution for which is the best translation. That is, that is why that Zanata has a feature, a review feature. It's called the review feature. Translated strings go through to the package, but also the reviewer can ticket to ticket this translation is good. Then the status will be changed from the translated to uh, approved. Nothing changed in the package or the, in the user interface at the end, but we can see that the translated is translated status is just translated, but approved status is approved by someone else. That means kind of the stamp that this is good quality translation. Any question? I can. I'm sorry. Yes, Remy. <laughs> Yes, uh, we just talked about the sprints and local sprints last FAD Tokyo. Also, Leona, there, uh, she is a pretty much uh, active about Albanian sprints. She has already done a couple of them and she is already planning the sprints and we would like to uh, spread the word to the sprints. But at this moment, the coordinator is not so keen because they are busy. So. We need ambassadors team's help to organize it. I just talked with, uh, where is Fale? Is Fale here? Uh, Italian, I talked with the uh, Italian ambassador as well. He's going to organize the uh, spring. Uh, unfortunately, there is a no, well, there is ambassador for the Japan, but he's a bit kind of the inactive. We need more active ambassador, so we, Cooperate with the uh, ambassador to give more sprints as well. So tonight at six o'clock, the EMEA ambassadors are going to have a meetup after the end of this. So mm -hmm. any translators that want to talk about organizing sprints for EMEA or with the ambassadors in general, that'd be great. I will be there. Thank you very much, Remy. Thank you. Yes. Any question? I can. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, there is a space, I think, in the PO file to, I'm not sure, I'm not a techie person, so I can't, I can't tell how to, but there is a space to add the comment from the developer's side, and that can be viewable in Zanata, yes. Thank you. 
Is any other questions I can answer? Yes. Uh, yes, is, is your application part of the Fedora? Uh, no, no, no. Right. Zanata uh, uh, has itself, uh, as I said, a separate, separate instance at the moment. So if it is not the Fedora or the, the package do not want to be a part of the Fedora, there is a say translate dot uh, translate dot org uh, another instance for other open source packages. I will show you the later after this talk. But there is another instance you can join. But that instance there is there is called team, but haven't been formed just like a Fedora. Fedora is more likely we have a sprints and we have a real teams, Albanian teams, Italian teams, Japanese team. But that instance is uh, just a framework. There is a no coordinator, there is a no moderator. But there is an uh, instance. Yes? I wonder, um, are you also giving back the translation to the upstream project? So for example, if there's a team project which is only translated to I recommend to use Zanata as upstream. Okay, so directly for the upstream project. Yeah, what, what, what is any platform are you using like a Transifex or anything else? Uh, what platform are you using for the translation? Um, that case, not necessarily uh, the Fedora Zanata.org instance is not limited to the Fedora package itself, because there is, a say, the Anaconda is will be used by other packages, but they still there, because inside of the Fedora Zanata.org instance, then you can use the uh, Fedora localization team in full. So if you move into the Fedora Zanata org, then you can think you can use the uh, biggest resource of the open source localization team. But that can be not necessary to be only for the Fedora, but that translation can be used the upstream for the other packages as well. I understand that the situation uh, we are talking about with the Zanata team, Zanata team will going to, I can't, tell it, I can't tell when, but they are going to implement a feature organization. With that features, more upstream project can join and then choose the teams or the people can be translated, not necessarily the Fedora people, just be able to form the, their own translation team without sacrificing the uh, resource itself. So I, um, unfortunately, I can't have a Zanata team today, so it's hard to explain about that features, but uh, probably next time the vlog, I'm looking at to be in the vlog with the Zanata team, so probably we'll be able to give a more good answer about this feature. So can I finish my talk if everybody happy? Okay. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.